Okay, check this out. I wasn't sure I believed it until I saw it. Here we have a list and we're just iterating over it and then measuring how long it takes to complete. Do you see my last one here? I got 1.5432 seconds. Now we're gonna make a small change and access the data in a different way, but have the same loop and largely the same code. So let's see what that does. <laughs> And then it's done. So that's 8.4. So we see it's about four times slower, which is wild, right? We just changed how we access the data. The code is really the same. Let's say you never knew that this loop could take about a second and a half. By looking at it, would you even know that it was something you can optimize or should optimize? Probably not. Now, the reason for this is due to memory access, and it is one of the main benefits associated with ECS or the Entity Component System Pattern. But unless you're making a AAA game, the performance aspects are not really going to matter to you as much. I'll go over why there are performance gains from using ECS, but before we do that, I wanna talk about two other benefits that are gonna have bigger impact for you. The first is flexibility, and the second is multiplayer. But first, what is ECS? The modern ECS pattern has three things. Entities, components, and systems. I say modern because there is a precursor to Entity Component System that is sometimes also called Entity Component System. But it only has entities and components. Now to reduce confusion, I'm gonna to refer to the original concept as the component pattern. The component pattern was introduced by Scott Bylas at GDC in 2002, where he talked about Dungeon Siege and how it had a data-driven game object component system that allowed designers to make significant changes to the game quickly and on their own. The main takeaway is to separate your functionality into components that each do roughly one thing and then attach those components to entities or game objects to create the type of object you want, whether it's a zombie or a cat. This was a pretty big mindset change for what was the right or popular way of making games for the last couple of decades, which is using a hierarchy tree. So you have a base object and you know your game has enemies, so you make an enemy object and then your zombie extends from enemy and you'll have a soldier enemy, so that soldier extends from enemy as well. And now this all looks good and it makes sense from a logical perspective. But games are not so neat. What happens if you have a soldier that's also a zombie and has characteristics of both? There's really no good solution to this. What tends to happen is you move logic further and further up the tree until you end up with one or more large base objects. Now this is how I and everyone around me made games until I read an article by Mick West in Game Developer Magazine and I was like, whoa, and I changed how I made games overnight. Just kidding. Real life is not so neat either. Trying to understand and implement a pattern you just learned by reading a few paragraphs is actually pretty hard. And I don't think I truly understood it until I started using Unity where the pattern is built in. The main takeaway from the component pattern is composition over inheritance. And this became the de facto way of making games, at least in AAA, in the late 2000s. But the idea of systems had already started making its way into the discussion at this time, where the logic in components were moved to systems, leaving components as little more than bags of data. Now what might be surprising is that the earliest discussions on ECS that I could find did not center around performance. It was mostly about organizing code, being more agile, allowing designers to make changes without a programmer, and other things involved with making a game. Performance gains seemed largely coincidental in that moving to a data-driven or data-oriented approach had the added benefit of playing nicely with modern CPU architectures. So all this evolution brings us to today where there's an ECS library for every language under the sun. And the generally agreed upon concept for ECS is this. You have a world and it is simply a collection of systems and entities. An entity is really just an ID that corresponds to a collection of components. Components store game state and have no behaviors. Systems have behaviors and store no game state. Here's the shocking thing. Components have no functions and systems have no fields. The flexibility comes in how reusable systems and components are. You can build a behavior for one enemy and then use it on another or on inanimate objects like rocks, tables, chairs, cars, basically any object in the game. You can build once, 
and used many times. The separation of concerns with ECS means that multiple engineers working on the same project are much less likely to create conflicts or step on each other. And it also means that because the system's code is so contained that refactoring it is much safer and simpler since it's not touching a bunch of other code all over the game. Now, non-engineers can also be empowered to make changes without having to wait for an engineer as long as there's an editor or a data file that can be edited. On the multiplayer front, running the same simulation can also be drastically simplified, especially if you're using the same tech stack across both, like many JavaScript projects, where you can share the same components and systems that don't involve rendering. It will also help to neatly separate netcode like prediction, rewind, and interpolation from the rest of the game. ECS is the approach we'll be taking with the open source zombie game, which is a side-scrolling beat-em-up we are building in public through videos like these, and as a public repository on GitHub. It is still early, so we haven't made the repository public yet, but stay tuned. So I've not actually made a real game with ECS before. So this is a learning experience for me as well, and I'm curious what we come across and learn along the way. While I don't think performance should be the main reason to use ECS, I do like knowing that the option is there and that the pattern encourages me to write code in a way that is generally more performant. And this performance comes from memory access patterns and data locality. When modern CPUs go to execute code, it will pull the data it needs from RAM plus some more data next to it into the CPU cache, roughly 64 to 128 bytes into L1 cache. This is an optimization for CPUs as they are very fast, but reading from RAM is very slow, so the solution was to just take a bit more data in case what we'll need next is nearby. Unfortunately, the traditional way that we write games tends to create objects more or less randomly throughout memory. And then the way that we access them in our update loops are more or less also random. And this causes the CPU to have to read from RAM much more often since the next thing it needs is not in the cache. This is called a cache miss. And the more cache misses per frame, the longer it takes the CPU to do its job. Now, the traditional way of organizing data is called an array of structs or what is an array of objects. But we can do something unconventional and invert it into a struct of arrays. Then using an ECS approach, our systems can iterate through the data for all our components, one after the other, and result in less cache misses, since the thing the CPU needs is like the thing it just needed, and all those objects are stored close together in memory. In JavaScript, we don't have control over how memory is allocated like we do in lower level languages, but structure of array ECS implementations using typed arrays do give us some control and are significantly more performant in benchmarks compared to traditional object-oriented versions. But what's really amazing is how this affects normal JavaScript arrays as well. We started this video by making a loop four times slower and all we did was change how we accessed the data. Okay, so using what we know now, we can try changing the layout of the data to fit the loop. And like magic, we have a fast loop again. 